in town somewhere good? Yeah. So we're going to, uh, every year I, I, I've, my brother and my sister, I'm, I'm the youngest of two. They live in Florida, in Tampa, Florida. And, okay. um, we all meet. So they have, there's four cousins down there or four nieces, and nephews down there, not cousins. And, uh, so my brother, his wife, my sister, her husband, their two kids, my brother's two kids. We all meet. My parents live about 45 minutes uh, up for me in Newport News. We have seven cities along the East Coast. I'm in Portsmouth, so it's they're kind of right up the way. We all meet in one. Uh, we all throw our money in and rent like a four-story cabin. Nice. Right? Um, usually we do it in Georgia, um, and it, they have some pretty awesome spots where you're right on like a creek, and uh, it's – you know, it's just, it's just an awesome time. So yeah. we try to get together once a year. We haven't been able to do it for the past year and a half, uh, past two years, but we, we've done it three years before that. So we're all meeting on Thursday till uh, after Labor Day weekend or Monday, Tuesday, and we come back. So it's just a good time to just kind of hang out. Everyone brings food. We all cook one night and it's just a good time to catch up with everybody. So Hell yeah. I'm, I'm, That's I'm awesome. To see everybody. Yeah. That's no, good. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another episode, episode six, I believe, of the Broken Moto Show. This is a collaboration of me, Cody from Motorcycle MD, and my buddy Matt from How to Motorcycle Repair, where we get together, hang out, shoot it, talk about motorcycles, drink a little bit of beer, and hopefully provide you guys with some kind of value with the issues that you face. We've actually, I'll say this for the first time, develop some type of schedule where we plan on hoping hopefully hopefully plan on hopefully having these videos out every tuesday for you guys to enjoy i know it's kind of we stack them up and um some people's questions might not be answered right away but we're trying our best all right so thank you and welcome to the show matt how can they get a hold of us yeah so we set up an email address it's called askbrokenmoto at gmail.com got it right this time so yep. you can submit your questions to that email address and please include the following information. Uh, your name, location, year, make, and model, mileage, and any pictures or video that you submit, we, we will roll that in right into this video. So yeah. try to take some video with your phone. Everyone's got a phone. Yep. Uh, feel free to talk in the video and talk about the problem. That would be awesome too. And maybe even a walk around the bike because, I mean, I've seen some of these questions come in and then we see the video and there's aftermarket air cleaners, homemade exhaust, oh, yeah. all, all yeah. kinds of stuff that, that matters when we're trying to answer your question. So right. the more info you can provide, the better. Nothing like a bike with like a blender set up, you know, where it's like how to start it. And it's got like all different types of aftermarket stuff going on. <laughs> Absolutely. Cool, man. Yeah. All right. So let's get into this first question. And this one's from Joe. And I believe he's in uh, Northern California, I think. Mm -hmm. um, and Joe was nice enough to write. <laughs> All right. There's one paragraph here and a whole page on the back. Boom. And I don't know what his question is. <laughs> I when I got I mean, to the bottom of I mean, it, I I I don't think there there was one. He was just kind of stating a problem and what it seemed like. Yeah, I, I I mean he has problems. Yeah, but I don't know what his specific question is. Yeah. Um. So I I really don't know what to cover here. Let's let's just paraphrase this this. Yeah, try thing, to because because uh, all right. So he has a Chinese Tao Tao fifty cc scooter. It's basically a Chinese GY six Honda clone motor. Okay. Um, I believe it's carbed. Yep. He has to once a month uh, tighten all the bolts because they vibrate loose. <laughs> <laughs> um, Classic Tao Tao. Yeah. So he goes for a typical ride out of his town from 6 a.m. and not gets doesn't get home till 11 p.m. on this scooter. That's that's freaking hardcore, dude. <laughs> yeah. Um, it handles the hills and twisties along the Big Sur coast of California. Shout out. And in the land back. Man, that's that's awesome. I mean, yeah. <laughs> if, if that if that thing is handling that kind of those kinds of roads, that yeah. that's amazing. 
Um, hairpin turns, roars up some mountain roads that shoot off other back roads. And he's been up to 2,700 feet with this thing. So that's, that's impressive for a Chinese scooter. Yep. Um, so he's had some charging issues. Yeah. And some lights blow out and stuff like that. Um, he put a new rectifier in it because it wasn't charging. Months he might, later, he, he might have put multiple rectifiers in it. Yeah. Um, maybe. Months later, he had a problem with the battery. He has. He wants to add in dash USB ports. Maybe charge his phone or something. I don't yeah. know. Yeah. Um. But this is what I say, in my opinion, anytime you have any problems with your battery or lights, you should check the charging system. Simply sharing to hopefully, oh, so sharing info. Yeah. Okay. All right. I don't know if he resolved the issue, but he definitely had one. So do you, do you work on Chinese scooters at all? Man, if, if here's the thing, okay, winter time. I'll, I'll, I'll work on whatever, right? Okay. Cause the shop's commission based. If we don't have work, we don't have money. Right. So I'll work on whatever, but we also sell this brand, not my decision, not the tech decision, but my general manager's decision to sell a brand scooter called a uh, wolf brand scooters, wolf, wolf brand. And okay. they were formerly known as gorilla brand scooters, but they were sued their pants off because someone else already has a gorilla brand scooter. But what I'm saying is that these Chinese scooters, there, there's more than the, a huge chance that they're all coming out of relatively the same area and they're the exact same parts. Okay. So Tao Tao is a very, very well-known brand scooter over here. Um, so it's like, I think it might be VIP VIP is a, is a, um, popular Chinese brand, but guess what? They use the exact same parts sure. as Gorilla, as Wolf, as all those brands. So yes, so, I have worked on them. Yes. So here, I've I've worked on a few Tao Taos. I think there was a 50 cc like this one, and then a 150 or whatever. Yeah. Um, I worked on a few of them, and I I refuse to work on them. Yeah. Moving forward, and the the reason is is, um, the the parts are low quality. Very low quality. And if you take out a broken part and replacing it, the new part that you're putting in feels so cheap in your hands. Yeah. And then you're putting it in and hopefully that will last. remedy the issue. Yeah. Well, I mean, I mean, I just, yeah. I just, and I just, and here's another problem. Like customers who buy these scooters for what, 800 bucks. Mm -hmm. And then they come in here and my average repair bill is like 150 right a average okay right. so now you're you're stuck with a bill that's a third of your price mm -hmm. of your scooter i mean they they're not they're never happy okay that Correct. Their, their scooter broke down it's not my fault right you know but i i just i just don't do it anymore okay and then like i i think i put a starter in one or something and i swear it broke <laughs> not soon after Okay. Yeah. And it was just cause I was holding this part. I'm like, dude, this thing is not, not looking good right now. <laughs> it's not going to last. <laughs> and, and not only yeah. that, there's not too much, there's, there's no service manuals for them or anything like Correct. that. And I'm just like, you know, I, I'm, you know. Right. And the, there, there's no real way to get like surefire way to get the parts for them. You usually just like awesome scooter.com. You know, and then and then you you get the parts for them. Dude, we have dude brand new scooters, bro. Out of the box, we sell them for that price. Two weeks later, back bad coil. I mean, two weeks later, they're back yeah. with a bad coil. Yeah. So it's likely that I mean, if you really wanted to try to. You know, if you're having a charging system issue, it sounds all rectifier to me. It's like when I when I read through it, he was overcharging, he was undercharging, like back and forth. To me, it sounds all rectifier, which means the rectifier's melting or it's junk, and you put a brand new rectifier for that model on there, probably from you know, AwesomeScooter.com, and it's 
awesome part, you know? So that awesome part then fails you again. So you have, you're either going to have to retrofit, you know, uh, a good rectifier on there. Maybe a, I mean, the thing with like stealing something from a, a, a known brand like Honda for their Metropolitans and their Ruckuses, the rectifiers are built into the ECU. So you can't just swap the part, you know, because it's built in. So you're talking about a $1,200 ECU that has a rectifier in it. So retrofitting may be ideal or run away. Buy a Honda scooter. Buy something. <laughs> buy uh, buy something that that has some backing to it. You know. Yeah. Um. I mean, many people put the GUI six motors in the ruckuses and then stretch them out. Cool. Still Honda Electronics. I mean, it's still quality stuff that has a backing to it. Where their the Chinese scooter brand companies' main goal is to pump out as much as possible for the lowest amount of price. Yeah. So that their marketer in the U S can then upsell it $400 because I'm going to promise you brand new scooters are coming at like 300 and $400 and they're, and they're doubling their price. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, but for, I'm not, I'm jealous of this guy, Joe. I mean, he's able to leave home yeah, dude. and he spend all day ripping this thing. He rips it on what seems like pretty nice roads. Mm -hmm. I mean, Big Sur and stuff. That's awesome. Um, but I, I, I'm just not a fan of the Chinese scooters. Yeah. And I, I, I just choose not to work on them. I mean, I yeah. always get... So what I do is when customers give me inquiries, hey, I got this scooter. I just say, I'm sorry, I don't work on them. But I know Correct. someone who does and I, I refer them somewhere else. At least I yeah. can help them that way. Um, Let someone lose sleep at night. Yeah. Let someone else do it. <laughs> well, I mean, there's a bunch of places here that sell them and repair them. Oh, cool. Okay. I mean, that's their thing. Yeah. So let them work on it. So I don't, yeah. you know. It, it's hard not to bash them because they are so affordable and they do help so many people, you know, with their work, with their job, get sure places A to B. But it, from front, from front wheel to back wheel, it's just not a good a very good trustworthy product. It's right. just not. I mean, I've I've dealt with issues on those type of scooters from front wheel to back wheel for when it comes to the meter, when it comes to how quickly the paint fades, when it comes to um, the wheels bending when you hit a, a speed bump or a pothole, you know, it's just, or the exhaust just snaps and falls off. I mean, it it's insane. It's insane. Yeah. I mean, brand new things yeah. with, with, with problems. So, yeah. I don't know what else to add to that. No, I got nothing else. So I, I don't know if you fix the problem or not, but if we were to point advice towards the starting issue or a charging issue, it would be to maybe look into retrofitting something with a name brand, something that has some backing to it. Yeah, that's a good advice. Yeah. And you know, what's crazy is like any part on this bike costs like 20 bucks to replace oh, yeah man. i mean or less it, yeah if you have a problem just replace half the parts and you'll be good <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, you'll be back up and <laughs> yeah cool so all right thanks for the question joe yeah joe hello cody and matt i'm evan and evan from denmark have a honda cb 404 very cool rare bike from the night from 1976 i have i actually believe i'll say this again even though we already had some complications with our internet. <laughs> this guy is definitely, or was definitely, or still is definitely a part of the Motorcycle MD Inner Circle. He's been a member for a long time, I believe. That's um, awesome. Great guy. Um, I have a very weak spark visual at the contact breaker, but when I check the spark plug, I cannot see the spark, so the bike does not start. Ignition point is set to be spot on, so his ignition timing is good, and, and the gas is also present. So he's getting gas to the carbs inside the cylinder. Carbs clean for all gas, at least the needles. Do you have any idea? Sincerely, Evan Anderson. So right off the bat, the fact that he's even talking, and I don't even know why we're even here talking about this. I don't know why he hasn't reached out to me in the inner circle. Maybe he has, and I've just, I've, I've missed it, but um, I have a very weak spark visual at the contact breaker. Number one thing is we're not looking for spark at the contact breaker. 
right? If, the, if, he, if he's talking about at the point system, we don't want spark there. You know, contact breakers are designed that when they, as soon as they break open, that that voltage can then jump into where the coil needs to go. And any spark that is shown at that contact breaker is actually a loss to where the spark should be, right? So typically is that when you see a bright spark at your points, we're talking about an old system. Many of you may not even understand what this is. When you see spark loss at the contact breaker, it's more than likely caused by a bad condenser. Like that, that condenser's job is to prevent that, right? So when you fire up an old bike and it has points and you turn the lights off, look at the points because you can run it with the point cover off. Run the points or run the bike and you're staring at the points and if you're pow, 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 fireworks coming off your points, condenser or condensers are bad because that's their job. Their main job is to condense that spark so we can send it to somewhere else, which is the spark plug. Okay, so no spark should be visible. No spark, even though you will see some. I mean, it's just a little, right? Uh, just a little bit. You know, it, it, it's almost unavoidable. Um, but when you see bright, you know, bright spark, pretty consistent coming off the points, replace the condensers, condenser with a with a good brand. You know, we're not we're not talking the eBay special four for three ninety nine. We're, 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 we're talking about you know, if you can still get factory, great. If you can get um, I can't think of any names of who makes the condensers, but I think what is it? TEC. I think, yeah, I think you're spot on. Yeah. The more so. you pay, the better it, it, it you know, it, it works or try a condenser off of a, of, off of a, you know, with Hondas, it's pretty cool. We use condensers off the old seven fifties, like, like the one that you just had Matt and your, uh, the one you use for your engine rebuild videos. Oh, the seven fifty. Yeah, we use the condensers off of those to power our forklift. <laughs> oh, okay. Nice. Works great. Yeah. Um, so this uh, this is a CB4. Yep. So he's got two coils. Yep. For one and four and two and three. So mm -hmm. I, I don't know if he's having an issue at both of them or what, but uh, yeah, okay. Maybe both are bad, so. Yeah. That's what I would check. I mean, doesn't specify too much about which cylinder it is. I have very weak spark visual at the contact breaker as if there was supposed to be some there, which is false. We don't want any there, if at all possible. Okay. Maybe time for new points plate, um, points and a condenser. Sometimes, it depends on how worn out the points are, but replace the condensers and go from there. Sometimes the condensers are like uh, soldered into the coils, which makes it a real pain. All right, next question. Hey, Cody and Matt, thanks for taking the time to answer some questions. Your content has helped me learn a lot about my bike and bikes in general. I bought a 75 Honda CB750 two years ago, my first bike. See photos attached. So we'll throw the photos up because it's a cool looking bike. Bing! 110 main jets, 42 pilot jets, stock airbox, aftermarket four into two pipes with mufflers, but no baffles. Bike starts and idles nicely, pulls smoothly through all the gears but I've noticed an occasional slight sputtering at 3000 RPMs when I'm riding at a constant speed throttle at eighth position or so. So it's nice that he gave us throttle position. Yeah. Yeah. It's helpful. It doesn't happen in top gear, just the lower gears. And it doesn't happen if I'm accelerating only when I'm holding the throttle still and only at 3000 to 3100 RPMs. I played with different air fuel screw settings. Um, it's a pilot air screw in this, on this bike. Which yeah. Didn't help. Screw, yep. Jets were cleaned recently. Carbs cleaned about a year ago. It's not something that worries me too much. Most of the time, I barely notice it, but I would love to get your thoughts. I figured it was just part of the charm and character of having a 45-year-old carbureted bike. Mm, amen. Thanks. Dave from Northern Virginia. Northern Virginia. All right. So, all right. So, Dave actually reached out to me and said, oh, cool. hey, he said, Hey, when are, when is this question posting? I'm like, well, <laughs> it takes a while to do all these episodes, three, four questions uh -huh. at a time. So I gave him some suggestions. He cool. made them, but let's hear what Cody has to think about this. <laughs> this sounds like one of those stump and chump things. From yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, um, you want my advice or yeah, go for it. Yeah. Okay. Let's see what you have to say. 
Well, he he made a change and it was better. So let's just see if you can. He guess. made a change and it was better. Yeah. Ooh. Now it was stock jetting, and he went to this jetting. Okay. So. Um, I'm gonna say that I believe. One ten main forty two pilot. I. I want to think that 42 pilot is not the right idle jet for it. I want to think that it's maybe a 40. Yeah, um, bingo, dude. That's oh, what it, cool. That's what, that's what it was. So he went to a. So he was at 40 with stock and he went to 42 and he started experiencing this uh, sputtering, which yep. is a rich condition at eighth yep. throttle. Cool. At, at eighth throttle, you're 100% on the pilot. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. You're, you're right in that transmit, that transition phase yeah. of where it's occupying pretty much the slow speed and um, the, the idle circuit. So 40 was supposed to be stock. He had 42s in there. Yeah. Switching to 40s helped. Yes. Yeah. So cool. yeah, he said it got significantly better. So just for more information is uh, with the 42 pilot jets, he was at one and a half turnout on the air screw. Okay. So that tells me that, you know, you can size the pilot such that you can get that air screw down to one turn. Right. If, if you went leaner. So he put the forties in, he went down to one air, one turn out and the sputtering got a significantly better. And I even said, Hey, <laughs> try 38s. You know, I, I don't know what's going on yeah. with, with these. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got aftermarket pipes. If you want to experiment, I mean, popping those bowls off with the clips and putting new pilot jets in is like 10 oh, minutes. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, yeah, whenever you start making changes to exhaust and all this other stuff, you don't know what you need until you try it. Right. Um, but yeah, yeah, you were dead nuts on with that answer. So congratulations. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Well, one thing that, that I'll, I'll, I'll buy, add, I'll buy, I'll buy you a beer. Ooh, <laughs> one thing I'll add to, the, to these old bikes, man, when, when it comes to the, the um, certain things that you wouldn't necessarily um, add to your cart when it comes to rebuilding them um, is things like the needle jet, right? And the emulsion tube. I had a, a member of mine, great guy. Um, he's been battling the 750 for months and months and months and months. And he was like, first it was way, it was way too rich all the time. And I had like, you know, just send me the card because he's cleaned them 20 times. And I've tried to talk to him 20 times about what to do. Send me the carbs and I open them up and um, I'll actually post some pictures here um, of what I found just because of the age of the bike. So we're thinking, you know, me and me and you, Matt, or it's like, well, if he drops to forty or drops to thirty-eight. Why, like, why would he need to drop to a thirty-eight when the stock is forty? Why, are, like, why are we trying to lean this thing out so much? Yeah. And and long story short, the metal just gets eaten away, man. Like things change in those carbs sure. over time, or the the brass gets eaten away. I mean, this member that I had, he had, he was getting like. 90 miles to a tank and i was like that, that just doesn't sound right and so he sent me him and dude the emulsion tubes are just like blown out like there there's so much deterioration uh, and on on the on the uh needle jets and the emulsion tubes i was like this is ins I, I i've never seen anything this bad like i said i'll post pictures of it and put brand new stuff in there boom he got like back to like 140 nice miles miles to the tank and it was just like so things change in the carbs over time. And I mean, there's some things that just don't really have a good answer besides the fact that, you know, the port that you're tightening the auto screw into that elongates, like when you run that screw in there 50,000 times, you know, sure. and you jam so, it in there way too tight. Right. Yeah. Things change. Um, that's the, the thing that I have found about these old ones. Yeah. And back then they probably had pure gas, you know, yeah. we were talking about with e lead. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we were talking about E10 uh, in one of these questions. I mean, dude, so many factors over yeah. 40, 50 years. Spot know? on. So, Good advice, though, Matt. I mean, you gave him the advice ultimately, so you get the trophy. Oh, thanks, man. 
uh what else did i want to say about this uh i think it sounds like just... he's he, he just needs to keep you know tweaking it um or he's maybe at a good spot where he can just enjoy the bike yeah 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 and another thing is like you know these bikes in the 70s were not lean from the factory they were good yeah they ran pretty good stock for sure then all of a sudden you get into the 79 80 81 all lean as hell so i mean no these are set up pretty pretty good out of the factory in the 70s for sure i I totally agree i totally agree yeah cool one more yeah one more man uh did you watch the video nope uh i can do it then uh well let me let me quickly say what it was so he's got a a cb 400 He's got mechanical inline four carburetors off an old CB 400 or 500. 404. Okay. Okay. Well, he couldn't open the goddamn thing. Got it. It was binding or it was just, I couldn't make out what the hell was going on. Like but he, the throttle wouldn't open the carb linkage. He, he had the physical carbs yeah. on, in his, on his bench and he was trying to open the, the wheel. Mm. and it was just binding to sh- to hell and i was yeah. I, w- I was just going to recommend uh pull the spring and then start detaching each slide and those slides need to something's going on i don't know why yeah yeah um i actually ran into that on a 78 78- 750 cb 750 these is this is when they had they went from the bottle so this is a couple years after they went from the bottle top like from the screw top carb to the key like what i call like the 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 key top carb yeah which is like a plate that you remove right um and someone had when they bolted all four carbs to that big backing plate Mm -hmm. um there's supposed to be like a little nipple that fits into a hole to allow the carbon to sit onto the plate nicely. And it was off. And what that did is from them running the bike, cause it ran, you know, yeah. um, over time, it will literally warp the tunnel of the carb to where no matter what I did, I couldn't fit the, um, mechanical slide in smoothly it would like hit this rough spot every time and i sand it and sand it and sand it and try to get this thing open i'm like this is stupid like i like you just need new carbs because yeah the the whole body warped to because they were installed incorrectly and the heat i think just like kind of like tweaked it gotcha all right you want me to read off this question and then we'll just talk about it yeah i thought okay. we were no I, <laughs> I i i was just explaining no let's let's <laughs> Yeah, read it off. Okay. All right, next question is from Dragonfly Chiba. That's his name. Yeah. Hello, I need help with my carburetor. Throttle lever is not rotating and carbs do not open or close. What could be wrong? Best regards. Okay, so in that video, he has a 70s mechanical slide carburetors that are found on a lot of CB4s. Yeah. Uh, 400 500 550 you know whatever yeah so what's going on is something's binding or something's not right i don't know what it is but what i would recommend is first off pull the spring off the return spring Mm -hmm. it's probably still going to bind and you're going to have to just start taking things apart right and each time like you know obviously all four carbs are linked under the keyhole caps yep so unhook one see if it gets better you should be able to slide each throttle valve up and down and it should be smooth. Super easy. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, no resistance. So something is going on and what, what you need to do is isolate the problem. So just start detaching all four, see where the problem lies. I mean, that's, that's the only advice I can give at this point. That's, that's the best possible answer for a, a mechanical um, type issue where it's, it's you're applying a function and it's not, responding properly tear it down bit by bit starting from you know left or right and then go through it what I, what i was saying dude i, I totally thought that we were already <laughs> no 
<laughs> I'm not going to say all that again, but what I, I, I can say, just edit that and drop it right in here, but uh, let's go, drop go. it in. Yeah. <laughs> um, no. Um, so what, what I found on, uh, I believe I had like a 78 set of carbs. This is when they transferred from the uh, bottle top to the key top, what I call the key top carb when you lift the plate off something similar and the 550 F's or the 550s are um, very similar. They just look a little bit cooler. I think a lot more over engineered as Honda would do back then. Um, but they had, someone had installed the, all four carbs onto that big BP backing plate incorrectly to where they didn't uh, like one was kind of hung up and that carb itself just sat there, not installed correctly, not, uh, you know, seated flushly against that backing plate. And over time, heat, because it would still run, you know, but over time, eat, heat and those variables that took place allowed that body to actually warp itself. And I. All right, guys, it looks like Cody is having some technical difficulties with his Wi Fi. So that's it for this episode. So make sure to comment below. Let us know what you think. Remember, submit your questions to ask brokenmoto at gmail.com. And don't forget to check out our beer link. All right, see you guys in the next episode.